What thing is secretly just one giant scam? The whole baby product industry is based on making parents feel worthless and irresponsible if they don't chill out for things that will be outgrown or unnecessary in 6 months. I'm expecting a girl in December. I took almost everything my cousin wanted to give me that she had left from her boys. My aunt and grandma said I can't put a girl in blue orange green brown etc. And I'm like this she's expensive new. And chances are she's either going to shore puke on the mat some point. So what do I care if it's blue? It's like god forbid my daughter sleep in a sleeper with dinosaurs on it. Dinosaurs are awesome. Had a girl and then a boy. Everything is dinosaurs. My sister just bad a baby and she dresses him in pink all the time. As she received hand-me-downs from another family or two who had girls. Want me to put y'all in touch so you can trade? Just kidding. Anyone who actually thinks that putting a child in a particular color of clothing makes any kind of difference in their lives whatsoever is freaking wacko. Advertising is all about creating an anxiety you can relieve by purchase. My wife made bank buying and reselling used baby clothes. She got familiar with all the hot brands on eBay at the time and when she was looking for clothes at the thrift store consignment shops for our kids she'd buy a bunch of other stuff to resell. A hat for a 2 year old's outfit. She sold for $70. Just the hat, not the matching dress and jacket. The brands would change the materials and patterns they used each year and some moms were obsessed with getting the whole outfit. I still remember a lady walking by when my daughter and I were out somewhere and she said nice Hannah. She didn't say your daughter looks cute in that dress. She had to drop the brand name to show she was up on fashion. $70 for a hat is absolutely insane and this is coming from someone living in the second most expensive country on earth. Ink cartridges for your printer are super cheap to manufacture but the retail price is really high. This is not even the real scam. The real scam is chipping the cartridges to make hard to use third party cartridges. You know what actually got my blood boiling? My office has one of those multicolor ink printers but oddly, it was like black, green pink and yellow. It ran out of yellow ink but the printer program straight up doesn't let me print black and white until I replace the yellow cartridge. This should be criminal. The business model is basically give them the printer, sell them the ink. It's usually cheaper to get a new printer which comes with ink than getting original ink from the manufacturer. Most manufacturers ship new printers with smaller cartridges or partially filled one these days so they last about 5 minutes before you have to buy the full ones. Basically just enough to get through a few test prints. Inkjets in general are just a scam at this point. Laser printer master race. Adobe is subscription based monopoly. I remember when it was cheaper to fly from Australia to the US and buy Photoshop compared buying it in Australia. I've used Photopia which is a free online version of Photoshop and it works just the same. Anything subscription based these days just irks me. It's understandable if there are constant updates. But still annoying. I do say that. As an aspiring designer trying to make it. Using Adobe's platform and products will help me be received into the positions that I am pursuing. Corporate owned apartment complexes tacking on hundreds of extra dollars in monthly fees on top of rent. Mandatory cable TV packages. Parking fees. On a flat surface lot. With no assigned parking. Valet trash. All a scam and just a way for them to pocket incremental sales on top of rent. I was shocked to tour an apartment where you had to buy the $100 plus mo cable package. Nobody I know has cable anymore. I wonder if it's some sort of deal with the cable company that by buying in bulk they get a better rate. Though it doesn't matter much as you're getting the $150 mo plan for $100 mo if you never wanted it in the first place. And to that end, the apartment complex is likely getting a kickback somewhere in there. They aren't doing it out of kindness to their tenants. I suppose there is some crazy timeline where they signed up for like a 40 year contract thinking cable was the real deal forever. We have a company in Canada called Stolite Investments. Give them a Google. They own a notable percentage of all rental housing in the country. And pride themselves in unnaturally high returns on investment for people who pay into their scam otherwise known as dangerously inflated rents. They have even start charging guests for parking through parking meters at their apartment buildings. Listen closely because our menu options have changed. That's a damn lie. You know good and well they haven't changed in 5 years. Also, we are experiencing longer than usual hold times. Another damn lie. Oh. Don't even get me started on the goddamn hold thing. 
Nothing is worse than hearing we are experiencing extremely high call volume from some giant corporation, like hell you are, you're just too cheap to hire enough people to adequately handle your call volume, I mean, if you have enough money to pay your CEO 10 million fine dollars then surely you can hire some more phone reps. Any product that's made by Gwyneth Paltrow, OP requested secretly a giant scam. I'm not sure Gwyneth Paltrow products qualify for the secretly part. Shut your mouth hole, you uneducated random. Goop cured my erectile dysfunction. Leukemia and balanced my checkbook while providing me $100k in passive income. I can't watch Iron Man movies now without thinking of the sh this woman sells. Pretty much anything that says it will enlarge your penis. Except for that random Brazilian spider, Phonutria Nigriventa, that will absolutely enlarge your penis for hours on end, and also maybe render you impotent afterwards. Can't win them all. I am a Brazilian and I didn't know about this spider. You could send me its address. What are you doing with that Brazilian spider stepsis? So you're telling me that this cream won't give me a Lysol can size dick? Yikes Lysol can size dick. I'm not shrinking my junk to that size. I'm sorry, the penis in larger pump has the endorsement of Austin Powers and that means something. Not sure what you mean. That sort of thing is not his bag, baby. So you mean to tell me that tying a rope around my penis and hanging a cinder block from it for hours on end will do nothing for me? I'm sure something will happen. Scarlett Johansson is not a scam. All those ads on podcasts. They claim to be a better way to blank when in reality they have crazy markup prices. In my opinion they are middle class traps. Casinos. All of the casinos in my state are video poker and video slot machines. There are barely any table games left. No one is happy. No one is having fun. It's just a room full of zombies feeding the machines and losing money. Every person I talk to is convinced that they know the secret formula to win. You cannot win. It might sound trivial but the old slots were just a spinning reel. These new machines are extremely addictive. The way the lights flash and the sounds go off like, bing bing bing, winner of 40 cents. The entire thing is a psychology hack to give people the impression that they are winning when they are not. The entire thing is a psychology hack to give people the impression that they are winning when they are not. There's a really interesting episode of the This American Life podcast about this. The new machines are regulated in the sense that the odds have to be legit. So for example, the machine might have to have a 1, 1000 chance of hitting some particular jackpot. However, there is no regulation with respect to what the spins reels look like on those other 999 attempts. So they are programmed to constantly show these near misses, giving the false impression that you kept coming so close to winning. They did a study of folks with gambling addictions, and the reward neuro trigger in the brain for these near misses was nearly the same as with legit wins. Award neuro trigger in the brain for these near misses was nearly the same as with legit wins. So true. Reminds me of a speech Al Pacino's character does in two for the money. See, most gamblers, when they go to gamble, they go to win. When we go to gamble, we go to lose. Subconsciously, me. I never feel better than when they are raking the chips away, not bringing them in. And everyone here knows what I'm talking about, hell. Even when we win it's just a matter of time before we give it all back. All the older folks that are addicted to video slots need to be introduced to video games. One copy of Skyrim could last the rest of their life. I'd never been inside a casino until I was almost 22. My mom ended up getting a position in one. And let me tell you, it's one of the most depressing things I've ever seen. I'd drop her off before 7 in the morning, come back after midnight, and the same people would be sitting at the same game, smoking their 1000th cigarette. I've never wanted to go since then, but god I still think about those people sometimes. When I was about 9 my grandparents took us to Vegas. We did things like Circus Circus, Treasure Island and saw some shows. One night as we were heading to a show there was a woman in the lobby, with a young daughter, three-ish, and she was sobbing and yelling at her husband. How could you? All of it? That was our daughter's money? I trusted you? I can't believe you gambled it all away. The little girl was hysterical and clutching a teddy bear. That scene has been imparted in my memory and I have zero desire to ever set foot in a casino. It's been nearly 30 years. The look the mother's face as she wailed is forever etched into my psyche. The casino is always the strangest mix of people. You have people dressed up nicely for fancy dates at restaurants. 
grungy gambling addicts and pursuit sweet punts, slutty bachelor and bachelorette parties, families on vacation in John shorts, drunk kids celebrating 21 year birthdays, creepy old men in suits with hookers on their arms, crazy senior citizens betting away their social security checks, and all sorts of other people. My mother's best friend's entire family is into gambling, her husband was dying of cancer, plus badly managed diabetes, and she dropped him off at penny slots regularly. I can't blame a dying man doing whatever makes him happy, but it was the saddest thing I've ever seen, and their daughter is a full on addict. She has a good job as the head of the id department of a company and it just disappears into the ether. I'll never blame an addict since I know what it feels like, but sh casinos are a plague. I'd advocate for them to be illegal if it weren't for the fact that they'd just go underground. The few times I went to a casino is just to eat at their cheap buffets, didn't gamble a cent. Someone who grew up with worked in the casino industry, the psychological tricks go beyond the machines. There will be no clocks or natural light visible on the casino floor so the player loses all concept of time. The carpet has a pattern that will make you feel unpleasant and nauseous so you have to look at all the pretty lights and noises. And the layout of the machines and tables are intentionally as maze-like as possible. And as you might guess, you get free drinks to lower your inhibition. The casino's goal is always to take as much of your money as, legally, possible when you walk in. Gambling addiction is no joke, and in my opinion the machine addicts are the worst. The number of players I've seen wear diapers, or just downright piss their pants is mind-boggling. That being said, if played correctly, both video poker and blackjack give you a slight advantage over the house. But getting a whole table to play blackjack correctly is like herding cats, drunk, coked up cats, not going to lie. I went to Vegas once in college and was very pleased to be entirely unimpressed with the gambling experience. Like, I already knew in my head that it's a scam but I also know they pull out all the stops to drag people in. Only reason I'd go to Vegas again are the shows. Had a blast at all those. The house always has an advantage over a perfect player, you will always be down on video poker as your number of hands tends to infinity, and your only possibility of a blackjack advantage is card counting which is completely mitigated by the house manipulating the shoe. They also understaff the booth where you cash out, so that the line is always long and people will prefer to wait a little bit and maybe play a little more. Anything that says it will detox your body, that's what your kidneys are for, and the liver. But what if it's an ad for a third kidney? Why stop at 3? Any claim that a magic drink will help you burn fat? No. No drink or no food can burn that that is a pure fabrication. On the same note, anything that says detox, nothing you eat or drink, other than water, will detox you. Detox typically means a diuretic. People seem to think that using the bathroom more often means they are getting healthier. And also any food that is zero fat. It may actually have zero fat, but they usually compensate for that by adding a ridiculous amount of sugar, which may be even worse. You haven't tried my meth infused coffee, to be fair. There are ones that work, but they are mostly just stimulants that suppress appetite. It's not the same as burning fat necessarily, but I mean, crystal meth will make you lose weight. There's some indication that caffeine will too, but the effect size is tiny. But that's not what you're talking about. What's dangerous about a lot of commercial fat burning products is that they are very often just a mixture of diuretics and caffeine. Itself a diuretic as well as a stimulant. The weight loss is essentially temporary. Because it's literal water weight. And the dehydration that ensues can be potentially lethal. Recycling plastics. Less than 10% of plastic waste is actually recycled. We can blame the plastic lobby for that. They are allowed to put the recyclable symbol on anything, whether it is recyclable or not. Materials which are not recyclable slows down the process and damages equipment. Single-use plastics are the literal worst. In case people don't already know how plastic is made its main ingredient is a derivative of fossil fuels like natural gas. They made the symbol that identifies the type of plastic look like the recycle symbol so people would think it means it can be recycled. Only some of it can be recycled. All multi-level marketing companies, they tell you that all you have to do is get 5 people to sign up and they each get 5 people to sign up, etc. Except these are not mathematical geniuses running these companies. By the time you get about 12 levels deep, you've surpassed the entire population of the earth. It's a good lesson in exponents. 
Mom's losing money, MLM. Every mother's group I ever tried to be a part of dissolved because everyone was trying to get everyone else to buy the products that they, themselves, were trying to promote. They'd all jump on the same bandwagon at the same time and fizzle out like a dollar store sparkler. The people running the companies aren't bad at math. The fact is they just don't care. As long as they're at the top of the pyramid, they can keep making money. And as for the people at the bottom of pyramid, I'd old enough to remember actual pyramid schemes, which were legal for a while in the late 70s and into the 80s. I had a co-worker explaining that the way you do it is you wait until you're close to getting the payout. Then you get your friends to join the scheme, to get you to the top. In other words, the way for you to win was to set things up so that your friends would be sure to lose. Later, 88 or so, my housemate had a pyramid program meeting at the house, where they were very careful to talk about power units and not dollars and you were not supposed to exchange power units at the meeting, that was supposed to make it legal. Looking back, it's hard to believe that people really bought into this sh but it happened. Emails and messages from corporates and celebrities that we are in this together during the pandemic. We are not all in the same boat. We are all in the same storm. Some are on super yachts. Some have just the one or Damien Bar. Hell. Some are just straight up treading water and pray they won't go under and drown. You mean that Imagine video in like April 2020 didn't end the pandemic and bring about world peace? Till. Essential oils being marketed as having these major health benefits as treatment for illnesses. The only exception being clearing your sinuses. Some essential oils actually do pretty good work in that regard. At least for me personally. Mileage will vary I'm sure. I once had some dumbass try and tell me that using scented oil lamps somehow purified the air. Recommended it for my asthma. Like WTF are these people on? I use it at home all the time. I think I know what I'm talking about. You a con hi hi lady. You're dumb as a rock and I'm never supporting your business. If you put stuff in the air, the air will be cleaner. I used essential oils when I had COVID-19 and lost my sense of smell to help train myself. That's an interesting use for them. I didn't even think of that. We'll pay the sales tax ads. It's not even a 10% discount. Price shown is actually increased by 10% from normal anyways. In the US, doing my own taxes, the government literally has all my info and can do it for me. But their excuse is that but Americans like doing their own taxes. No, I especially don't like being forced to pay for a service like TurboTax either. There were actually lobbyists to prevent the IRS from just sending you a bill or sending your return. Cite how are they supposed to make money if they can't charge you? Bottled water. Looking at you Nestle, there is less water in the bottle than the water they had to use to produce it. Exactly, when your life cycle assessment only shows the water needed for transportation and purchase, the cost of creating the bottle is conveniently ignored. The lottery. Interestingly the lottery had a big impact on the mafia prior to legalizing it. Most cities had a numbers game run by organized crime that was very similar. Now we know that grandma plays the numbers. I work at a place that sells lottery every single day to people. Some people will buy scratch tickets, Powerball, etc. They come back to the counter 5-23 times the same day trading their tickets for more, spending more money because they lost all of the previous winning, or just be in a endless loop of never winning any more and not losing any less. I've asked why they do it, and they say because if they don't hit big it's not worth the cash, so winning $1-$100 is nothing to them. But they don't realize even if they do win big they practically are just getting only half back of what they spent trying so hard to get. It's a lose-lose. Lottery is indeed a huge a scam. 23 is an oddly specific number. I believe that's called gambling addiction. Yes and no. Depends on how you approach it. I worked with a very respected statistician who, seemingly surprisingly, played the lottery regularly. Not the huge ones, but the state ones that were a few million or so. I was surprised and asked him why, his response was that as it stood, he had a 0% chance of retiring early, he could afford a few dollars a week and the lottery at least gave him a non-zero chance of retiring early, I'll throw a couple bucks on the powerball or mega millions every once in a while, like you said, the odds at zero, people like to say it's dumb, but nobody ever says that about the winner, until they mismanage their new money and blow it all, at least, the wedding industry, 
funeral services, praying on the grief of loved ones. I understand that it's really for the living to celebrate their lost loved ones, but when I'm done I just want my family to bury my dead A in the backyard and throw a bash at the house in my honor. Doubt I'll mind considering I'm dead. When I'm dead, just throw me in the trash. Frank Reynolds, roll me up in the rug and throw me in a hole. Dead or alive, just because we are bereaved doesn't make us saps. All MLM, multi-level marketing companies are nothing but giant pyramid schemes. Do not support these and try to save your friends and family from them. They ruin people's lives. I got tricked into a few of those meetings when I was younger. They can be clever in how they get people into. They make job postings that describe it very well like a regular job. Sometimes not even mentioning sales they market it as customer service. They set up an interview with you. And you don't know until you actually get there that 50 other people got the interview too and you're all interviewing together. Watching a presentation. City I used to live had an Herbalife bar. They'd make job postings and make you think you were applying to actually work at the bar where they sold drinks and smoothies and stuff. It was just a ploy to get you to the Herbalife MLM meeting with them. Conveniently hosted in the bar where you could also buy their drinks since the meeting was over an hour. Planned obsolescence. And survey says, diamonds, but also most jewelry. FIFA games, practically all sports games in general. FIFA is the worst of them. They just copy last year's game into the new one and slap a different color scheme. You're basically paying $60 for updated rosters and jerseys. It's not a secret to some of us but American healthcare is a scam on a scam within a scam. A hospital will charge over inflated prices. Box of tissues. Sometimes listed as mucus recovery system. A single tissue box in a hospital costs $8. Gloves. Charge to patient. $53 per non-sterile pair. Sterile or higher, for a total of $5,141 during average patient stay. Cup medicine, cost is for the plastic cup used to administer medicine, not the actual medicine inside it. Charge to patient, per cup, $10, for a total of $440 during average patient stay. I pay monthly around $400 in taxes in my country. But I know for sure I can walk tomorrow into a hospital with anything and not only the appointment and other costs will be covered. The medication will also be free. Any additional surgeries or exams would also cost me nothing. Also, my sick days, not vacations. Sick days, from work would be paid by the state, and a little sum by my employer. The two-party system. Recycling. Some countries just dump it at the same place as trash. Some do better, but it's still a feel-good thing people do. I still do it. Scientology. That humans are here to just work and die. No way humans evolved so we can work 5 of 7 days of the week, trying to jam fun in on weekends. I was under the impression we evolved to jog slowly for long periods to exhaust our prey. Now some jog slowly to exhaust themselves. This guy gets it. Run that deer to death. Then poke him with a stick when he stops to catch his breath. I always had this kinda thought that, dude, we should live our life. One stroke three our day of our life consists of working a job, or studying for a job. Another one stroke three our day is sleeping, and the last one stroke three our day is free time, of which you then also need to spend with other stuff you don't want. And then, at 64 years you are finally allowed to live your life without working your A off anymore. But you also, statistically, have less than 20 years left to live, and might already be too broken and sick, maybe due to your work as well, to do anything but sit at home. I don't mind the constant dread of someday I die, but knowing that I spend my days like this and might die before I can enjoy the rest of my life, that kinda gives me goosebumps at times. I know this is currently how civilization works but like, I still find it kinda questionable. Getting a phone call about your car's extended warranty. Us healthcare system. I went to the ER a few weeks ago for an unknown pain in my chest and overall shtai feeling. Got slapped with a 1500 bill with what turned out to be viral food poisoning. My brother, who is a doctor, said that was normal. Why the f is that normal? My husband went to the ER thinking he was having a heart attack. It was a panic attack. He got slapped with a $2000 bill. Meanwhile one of his worries back then was our financials. Insurance. You pay monthly for it and then you still have a deductible. 
they'll only cover so much and they'll try to weasel out of what they actually owe you. College tuition. I graduated with a BS, Information Technology and Computer Science. Working at a job and earning just as much as my co-workers who didn't go to college and earn certifications. They have zero debt, while I'm $40k in the hole. Engagement rings. The effing wedding industry in the US. $20,000 $30,000 for a single day. Stressful as hell event. When I learned a photographer alone runs $5,000 minimum I almost puked. And a lot of venues didn't give a shit about COVID and hosted packed weddings. Resulting in deaths because we got Tamark Amoni Esomeo absolute slime balls. Now before all the vendors dogpile me, let me be clear. I'm fully aware why you guys charge as much as you do. I also hope you understand why an average person like me looks at the price and says hell no. And for those that want a conventional wedding, if you can't swing it, do whatever you want. My wife and I did a sandals all inclusive vodka wedding honeymoon. Which has its own pros and cons but still a no brainer due to the cost and convenience. I read this as welding event and I was like wow, I didn't know welders did that. Convincing every high school kid they need to go to university. In reality skilled trades or another specialized school would be the best route for a lot of people. And the pay can be very good. I mean look up the happiness of the trades. Plumbers are some of the unhappiest people. I fing hate this sh. I make enough money to live a little like one vacation a year but not enough to really do anything. I don't even have debt but I am basically just stuck. I worked a trade when I was 20 and it was awesome. I debated going back to school. A 50 year old guy said it isn't awesome at 50 when you get injuries and wear and tear. Yeah, Reddit never talks about this side of it. I absolutely enjoyed the idea of my time and the trades. I still build things for myself and friends. But I knew I would have a broken down body and I'd still have to find something else before I hit 40 stroke 50. My dad could barely use his hands, legs and back were shot, and he's way tougher than me. There is a trade off for doing this kind of work. Health as well. 10 year painter, cars, my knees and back are smashed to bits and I've got another 40 years of this nonsense.